the people out also, all right? Now, in Genesis chapter 50, let's get to this, all right? In, beginning in uh, verse 17, and the, this is Joseph's brothers after Jacob has passed, you know, and they're concerned about how Joseph might treat them now, okay? Because, you know, they were the ones who put him in a pit, uh, who lied on him, tore his coat up, you know, or who didn't like him because of his dreams, you know, they were just, you know, they were just a bunch of guys that really had it going on for Joseph. You know, they just didn't like the way Joseph stood with their father. Okay. And so Jacob has passed on. Joseph is the second in command, you know, the prime minister of Egypt. And so Joseph has the power to put people to death just speaking his word. I mean, this, this young man was, he was given some tremendous power by Pharaoh. Okay. But it was all ordered by God. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how Joseph responded to his brothers, okay, so that you and I can learn a great lesson tonight in the response of many things and the many voices that are speaking to us uh, during this time uh, through media, through other Christian people, uh, because if you don't understand the power of words, you can get yourself caught up into things that other people are saying, and you don't even realize that those things are attaching themselves to you like the little tentacles off of an octopus. And sooner or later, just like the tentacles off an octopus rips its prey to, apart, you also fall prey uh, to your own words and to uh, the attitudes that you have toward other people, okay? Now, here we go. Verse 17. So shall you say unto Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now, uh, the trespass of thy brethren and thou sin. This is verse 17. Genesis chapter 50, okay? And he says, um, for they did, they did unto thee evil. Please underline that word because evil uh, is actually the lowest thing that you can do in this world, evil, all right? And it says, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the, of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when he spake unto him. In other words, his heart was broken because he had brought them into Egypt, given them the best of the land in Egypt, and, and taking care of them all these years, and now Jacob has passed on, and now they still have this in their heart. After all of this time, they could not see that there was a different behavior in Joseph's character and in his words and in, in his actions toward them, even though he knew that they did what they did, but he never allowed that to get to him, okay? And this is something that we're going to talk about tonight, okay? He says this. It says, Joseph wept when they spake unto him, and his brethren also uh, went and fell down before his face and said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, he says, Fear not, for I am, for, for am I in the place of God? You know, I mean, I'm not God. I'm, not, I'm just a man, and God is, you know, all of us come into this world, and we need to learn certain things about humility, and uh, we need to respect our place of humility, and we also need to respect God's place of authority. And so Joseph says this to them. He says, uh, but as for you, all right, and this is, this is a hard thing with him. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now, in society today, there are a couple of words uh, that people use. And a lot of times, uh, if you will look at any of the old uh, uh, sitcoms like, you know, Perry Mason, uh, uh, what's that other word, Madlock, uh, those guys, they always talk about justice. There's always this lady standing out front with the blindfold over her, and they said justice is blind, okay? There are two words that you and I need to look at tonight so that when we think about how we treat people, we treat people based on what's right, okay, not what everybody else is doing. Because you can get drawn in. Uh, unholiness is very contagious. You can get drawn into saying things uh, that you don't even know anything about, okay? And that can get you in a lot of trouble. In fact, it can get you into eternal trouble, okay? Now, we, there are two words, justice and revenge, all right? Justice, okay, this word that we hear a lot in the courtrooms, justice demands that those who do evil against society, all right, be punished by society, Okay, that's justice. 
okay? You've seen the courtroom scenes. Some of you probably been in the courtroom, all right? All right? And, uh, but justice demands that those who do evil to society, all right, they be punished by society, okay? So justice, we're going to see that it is very different than revenge, okay? Revenge is a matter of the heart. It speaks, all right? It speaks, all right, you just wait. It speaks. This is, this is revenge. Justice don't speak, you just wait. Justice has a system, all right? But revenge, all right, revenge speaks from the heart, okay? And it tells us and it causes us to begin to, to speak things and to begin to hold, a, a, as we say, keep score against someone so that later on uh, you can carry it out or when you hear that something happened to that person, you rejoice over it, all right? We don't want to be like that because Jesus gave us a tremendous illustration about keeping ourselves away from revenge, okay, so that we might walk in the blessings of Almighty God. Now, this is a particular time in society where you have a lot of voices speaking, a lot of people talking about a whole lot of things, but you need to make sure that if it's justice, let justice take its place, but never get into a place of revenge in your heart toward some offense or somebody else's offense or something that you don't like, okay? Now, I'm going to give you a little lesson on this, and uh, you guys can take notes, or you can go on the site again this week, and you can look at this, and you can take your own notes, and, uh, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you with a lot of these things that I'm going to share with you tonight, okay? When we're hurt or offended, it doesn't take long for us to find ourselves a warning payment uh, from those who, who we believe that are indebted to us. You guys with me? All right, you guys with me? Okay, now I'm reading this, and this is a lesson. This is Bible study, and you guys really pay attention to this, okay? When we are hurt or offended, again, all right, it doesn't take long for us to find ourselves, okay, wanting payment from those who are indebted to us, okay? Uh, and you have to ask yourself this all the time from your heart, okay? This is a hard thing. This is not justice that we're dealing with from the Bible. We're dealing with the fact that, Sometimes you can get in the mode of revenge and wanting things to happen to people that you really don't even know the whole story about, okay? Is, it, is there someone that you believe tonight? Is there someone that you believe, okay, that owe you something? Okay, in your heart. I'm talking about in your heart. I'm not talking about, you know, you loan somebody $5 or $20 or $10,000. i am not talking about that. I'm talking about is there someone that you believe that owe you something because guess what? They wouldn't apologize or they offended you, okay? Maybe uh, they didn't give you the second chance that you deserved on the job, okay? Maybe uh, somebody didn't give you a fresh start, you know? Well, they gave us everybody else a second chance. They let everybody else do this. Maybe they didn't do that with you. Maybe they didn't. Uh, what about the explanation? They didn't give you an explanation why they did a certain thing. Well, authority really shouldn't give you explanations why they do everything anyway, because if they do, they give away their authority. So you have to understand that there are simple little things that can cause you to think that someone owes you something, okay? And you can hold that thing in your heart, not realizing that, guess what? You're going to do some, you're going to do some certain physical things to yourself, as well as relational things. You're going to cause some things to happen in your life. Because, again, you believe that somebody owe you something, okay? And this is the way that sometimes we think about it. How about that childhood that you didn't get? You know, well, my, my daddy wasn't there or my mama left us, you know, and you hold it against them, you know. Even though you say, well, I love everybody. But deep in your heart, guess what you're doing? They didn't give me the childhood that I should have gotten. You know, I had to stay home and mind the babies while mama went out to work and this and that. The, the, the thing in your heart, this is what I'm talking about tonight. This thing that wants somebody to pay you or you believe that somebody owe you for something. That guess what? That you believe they owe you for. Maybe the person never even thought about it. They don't, they don't even know what's going on. But you believe, see, what you believe from the heart is what takes place. It's just like you when you got born again. It's what you believe from the heart that took place in your life. So if you believe from the heart that somebody owe you something and, and, and you're holding on to revenge, then that's a deep-seated uh, hatred against the things of God, okay? 
and you really have to watch it. Now, we're going to look at some scriptures tonight. Don't, 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 don't kick me down. Don't shut, don't shut the TV off. Don't shut it down. You know, don't shut up your earplugs tonight. Don't, don't go get your Kool-Aid right now. You know, let your Kool-Aid and your chicken wings wait until we finish. You need this because we're living in a time when there's only going to be one more world wealth transfer. And only those who have a heart that's big enough and open enough with God are going to receive that. See, this is the time when you need to check your heart for all kinds of things because we are going through the cycle that's running the end time and it's going to run its course, okay? Now, now if that person didn't give you that thank you on the job, you know, but you heard them thank somebody else, don't, don't, don't hold it in your heart, okay? It could just have been a head thing or they could have been running or whatever. Don't hold it in your heart. And there's so many sensitive people that hold things so fast in their heart and they don't realize that they, what they're doing is they're growing that heart to be like that, revengeful. And then one day, guess what? You may not make it to where you think you're going to, okay? We need to make sure we do this, okay? Now stop and think about this for a moment. There's a long list that you could have, okay? And I mean a long list. My wife and I, you know, we've been doing ministry together. You know, she's been in ministry for 30 years, me for probably 28. You know, she beat me to the punch, all right? But, <laughs> but the thing is, that's 50-some years, almost 60 years of ministry between the two of us. We've heard a lot of things. We've seen a lot of things. We know a lot of things. And sometimes people don't think that we know, you know, because we're not all over the world, running all over the world, or we're not all over TV. You know, well, that's God's call, and that's the people around you call. It's how people value you that causes you to be raised up in, in, in any place, your family, your business, or whatever. That, that's a deal about value. But we don't hold it to the point where this person did that or this person did that. We keep on putting our foot to the pedal that pushes the Word of God forward every time so that the truth of God's word can be shared with as many people as we have the opportunity. Not getting into revenge because somebody didn't, you know, somebody didn't tithe. So guess what? You're going you're gonna to be ugly to walk. You know, no, we teach you about tithing. That's on you. That's on you and God because guess what? One day you're going to have to stand before God for an eternal position based on how you obeyed God here. That's, that's on you. That's not on us. But we are, as, as men and women in, in authority, we are accountable to teach you what God says that you should learn. See, you are accountable for taking in the things that God bring to you as gifts so that you can be blessed by God, okay? If you be willing and obedient, you shall, be, you shall what? Eat the good of the land. That's what the Word of God says, okay? Now, let's get back to this. Here's your list and your long list that you could have. Parents that, guess what, should have been more protective of you. Somebody molested you when you were a kid and you blaming your parents for it. Or maybe your parents molested you and you blame them for it, okay? And now guess what? The blame is coming back on you and you're blaming yourself now because that reversible thing now wants you to be just like they were. I'm just telling you, there's a long list of things. Children, sometimes we say, well, they're not appreciative enough, you know? People get into all kinds of little things and they hold these little lists and they say, I'm going to get even with them. Or I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do this, you know? Uh, some young lady was sharing in a book I was reading last week about her, her uh, family and her culture. And she says, if you do something in that culture, in that family that they didn't like, they would cut you off. Totally cut you off for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know? Now, what does that make that child feel like? You know? Rejection, here, all the stuff comes again. And then sometimes you can get in revenge and not trust anybody because of the way your parents did. Okay? Now, all of this adds up. All right? Your spouse, uh, sometimes you think, well, why isn't my spouse more sensitive? You know, and then you hold that thing for a long time, and then guess what? You start building up a little revenge in your heart. Well, I'm going to get even. I'm not going to do this. Well, if he or she want me to do this, I'm not going to do this because they didn't do that. That's, that's on the side of revenge. That's not justice. That's on the side of revenge, okay? And then guess what? We come down to me, the preacher. The preacher should have been more attentive. What? The preacher can't attend to everybody. That's why everybody's here, so that everybody can look at everybody and help and, and notice and, and fix things. The preacher can't be attentive over everybody's needs. My goodness, come on. That's why we have elders and deacons and, you know, and helps ministry people and all these directors and things, you know, we're bringing into the ministry. 
That's why you have all these things, because the preacher can't be attentive to every person in the ministry. And then somebody gets, a, you know, get all bent up, but he didn't notice me today. He didn't speak to me today. Come on now. You get, you, you're letting your heart get into a little, a, little, a little block of revenge. And now you know, well, I'm not going to speak to them until they speak to me again. Come on now. That's revenge. That's not justice. Okay. Nobody did anything to you to cause punishment. Okay. Now, come on, go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Okay. Matthew chapter 6. Don't you just love Matthew? Know what he was doing when Jesus found him? He was robbing people. <laughs> when Jesus walked up to him, and you read the two, the couple of accounts about Matthew, one said Jesus, he's a man, then one says he's a, he was called by Jesus to be a disciple. Jesus the man, Matthew wrote about himself, Jesus the man. Jesus looked at the man, he called the man. Matthew, you know, is a great book for you to, to understand the dynamics of the kingdom being laid down. All right? Many principles in here Jesus showed us about living right. Okay, and you need to read it over and over and over. Matthew chapter 6, verse, uh, beginning in verse, oh, verse 14. Verse 14, here we go. <clears throat> For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, boy, that's a big conjunction. But, it, it's putting these two together. You have a choice. But, if you forgive men if you forgive not men thou trespasses, neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. All right? Now, that is a point, okay? Now, Jesus is not questioning whether you have been hurt. This, this, this scripture is not saying that you haven't been hurt, okay? That's not the reality of the scripture, okay? Because he took on our hurts also. Remember what he paid for? Okay? So he's not really saying, you know, there's a question about whether you have wounds from going on in this life. Because if you're in this life, you're going to get cut somewhere. You're going to get stuck somewhere. Something is going to happen. That's not the question that Jesus is putting here. The, the reality of the scripture is that he's not doubting that you've been sinned against. He's not saying, oh, they didn't sin against you. You know, he's not saying that. No, what he's saying is this. If you don't forgive. That means something has been done against you. He's not knocking out the reality that somebody did something to you so bad that sometimes you still cry about it. I don't know who I'm talking about, talking to them tonight, but I'm pointing my finger in that screen and I'm telling somebody because this has been something that I could have just did this as a Bible thing, you know, tonight and let everybody hear, hear about it. But I told Pastor John, I said, this is something that needs to go on, on the Internet. It needs to go there on our website so that guess what? You can look at this because somebody needs to be set free from this kind of revenge in your heart. All right? Jesus, again, he does not doubt that you've not been sinned against. But what he, the issue is the existence of, it's is, is not even the existence of the pain. It's the existence of taking care of the pain. This is what he's talking about. This is your way to take care of the pain. Yes, they did do you wrong. But guess what? You can fix that. Oh, man, did they lie on you? Hey, I'm number one on the lie scale, all right? I'm at, I'm at number 10, you know, from 1 to 10. I'm all the way at 10 about people lying on you. They never talk to you, but they always got something to say about what you said. See? No, 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 no. Yes, they do do stuff against you. But Jesus is saying this. The issue is let's treat the pain. The treatment for the pain is forgiveness. <laughs> The treatment, I mean, that's simple. You know, you go to the doctor for whatever. People go to the doctor now for a cold, you know, and, uh, you know, for anything. The, the deal is there's treatment for your pain. There's treatment for your offense. There's treatment because somebody didn't say thank you. There's treatment for somebody that, guess what, took your job. There's treatment for somebody to turn you in when they shouldn't have. There's treatment for stuff like that. There's treatment, see, and it lies in your heart, the, the, the ability to say, I will forgive. That's the treatment, and that's simple treatment. And the more you do it, the more immune you are to things that try to, to try to hurt you. The more you do it, the more you practice forgiveness of other people, the more, guess what, you can walk around and be happy with God because all you're simply saying is that, Lord, I want you to treat me the way I'm treating them. That's all it is. That's what forgiveness is. Lord, treat me the way I'm treating them. 
And if you're walking around with a revengeful, a, a vengeful heart, or you're walking around planning, planning and plotting revenge, then all you're simply saying is, Lord, I want you to do the same thing to me that I'm doing to them. Because God is saying, you forgive, your father will forgive. If you don't forgive, he won't forgive. Now, let me give you some scenarios about why it's so important to, to not have a revenging heart, a heart that's always plotting against, I'm going to get even with somebody, okay? I read this story about a, a young man who was, uh, he was like, you know, he was, he was in the national park and he was viewing all the animals and he was taking videos of the animals and there was this big grizzly bear who had walked over to uh, this, uh, these discarded uh, products that someone had left there from a camping site. And this grizzly was tearing stuff up and he was going through stuff. And all the little foxes were standing around watching the grizzly. And the crows were standing around watching the grizzly. You get to see all these little other animals, they were standing there watching the grizzly. And the grizzly was standing there and he was tearing into the, to the boxes, you know, discarded things. He was tearing into the stuff. And all of a sudden, here comes this little skunk. And this little skunk walked right on by everybody else and walked on up to where the grizzly was. And he started tearing right into the stuff beside the grizzly. And guess what the grizzly did? The grizzly did not object to him, that skunk, taking his stuff. Because the grizzly knew the price that it was going to cost. That, that's, that's as simple and natural as you can get. The grizzly understood that if he got into anything with that skunk, what it was going to cost him. And you need to understand that people, that guess what? People that come around and they want to take your stuff, they want to take your happiness, they want to take your joy, they want to take your moment. Guess what? You have to classify them in the category of the skunk. Leave them alone. Let them take what they want to take. God sees it all. He's going to give it back to you, and he's going to give it back to you double. All right? Don't, don't get involved with the skunk, okay? Because something is going to happen to you, and you ain't going to like it, okay? Leave the skunk alone, all right? So we get into getting away from trying to keep score, okay? We don't want to try to keep score with people. You know, we used to hear this old thing, uh, you know, I forgive, but I don't forget. That means that, you, guess what? You're holding in your heart. You got some revenge. I, I've seen people, you know, that get bent up and then just hold on to it, and they're looking for something else that they can hold against somebody else. You know, it's like they're the strong man holding the whip, and they're going to tie you to the post. And every time they think about hitting you, it's because it's something in them that they want revenge for. Mama treated, you know, brother better than he treated, than she treated me. And now mama's gone, but you don't like brother. Because of what? Revenge in your heart. You know, well, daddy did this for them. He left this for them, but he didn't leave me anything. You're still living. Daddy gave you life. You're here because of mama and daddy. You know, they gave you life. Why are you still, you know, bent on brother and sister? The Bible tells us that we ought to forgive, we ought to love, and walk in that love because guess what? There's one word that describes God, and that's love. One word, not 25, not 50. One word is called love. Okay, and when you walk in that one word, then guess what? You'll be walking just like God is, no matter where you are, no matter who you're walking before, all right? It's most important. Now, settling score is going to always cost you something great. It's very expensive, okay? It's very expensive, okay? When you're trying to, you know, I'm going to get, you know, I've seen people come to church and sit way away from somebody that they don't want to talk to or, or they're offended with or whatever, you know. And, and I'm going like, now, everybody's hearing the word of God. What, what's the deal? The deal is that person is not spending time to make sure that their heart is right. See, God says vengeance is mine. I will repay because the danger of vengeance is that, guess what? It, your heart can't take it. See, God's heart took it. That's why he sent his son. When he sent his son, the angel saying, peace on earth. Man, wouldn't you have loved to have been there and heard this? Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. They knew 
that Jesus was going to come and unleash the goodness of God on the whole earth. They knew that when they sang that. They, they would have never sang that if they did not know the character of Jesus. They knew that he was going to come, and guess what? He was just going to unleash the goodness of God that men would start running to God, and that's what he did. Acts 10, 38, for Jesus Christ, what did he do? He was anointed of the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of who? Of the devil. So where's your oppression coming from? It ain't coming from God. It's coming from the devil. That revengeful heart is coming from the devil. It ain't coming from God, okay? So you need to make sure you keep yourself straight, do good, represent God as a Christian. Now, let's talk about what it's going to cost you if you have a revengeful, if, if you have a, if you had a heart that's just always seeking, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to get even. I'm going to make it happen. They're going to see how I am. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's going to cost you, first of all, it's going to cost you your relationships. Okay? And the reason it's going to cost you your relationships, you ever seen a Western? Book of Amos says this, and this is, this is good, 3-3. Three, three. It says, can two walk together except they be agreed? No. All right? You have to believe. And you should never believe in a bounty hunter. All right? You know what a bounty hunter is? You ever seen the Westerns? My pastor John is back there laughing. You ever seen a Western? And, and you ever seen the bounty hunters, the old Westerns? Okay. Now, you're going to have to go back some because these new Westerns, they don't have it like this. But, but the old Westerns, they always had bounty hunters. And you always saw the bounty hunter traveling by himself. And you know why he was traveling by himself? It's because he made his living keeping score, settling score for somebody. Somebody had a, you know, a bounty on, on somebody, and he was going to settle the score for that so he could get the reward. The bounty hunter, see? So you got to watch hanging around bounty hunters, people that's always living. That's the way a bounty hunter lives. He lives by himself. He doesn't trust anybody. <laughs> he doesn't trust anybody, and that's the way a bounty hunter is. That's the way a person is that has a revengeful heart. You know, you got a heart that you're always looking to keep score, get score. Let me tell you something. Nobody wants to be around you. Why? Because one day a stray bullet may hit them. You don't want to get shot in the back because guess what? The person that you're traveling with, that's the way he makes his living. And if he makes his living that way with other people, he'll make his living that way with you. There's an old saying down in the country, a dog carry a bone, he'll bring a bone. And if he bring a bone, he'll carry a bone. In other words, that's his lifestyle. All right? And so you need to make sure that you keep your heart straight. It's going to cost you relational. People are not going to want to be around you when they know that you are a person who always has that ability, not, not God-given, but coming through instructions by spirits, that you always have that ability that you want to always get even with somebody. Your getting even will never be satisfied. It will never be satisfied because of your memory. Because the way your memory works, you will always bring up something that person did. And if you put 39 lashes on that person's back at the first memory, and then you walk away and you think about something else, what are you going to do? You're going to want to come back because guess what? You're trying to settle a score. You're going to come back time and time again because all you want to do is settle a score. And you can never settle a score with a revenging heart. It doesn't last. It's looking for something, like the bounty hunter. It's always looking from one place to another. It's looking for something that it can go after and something, guess what, it can say, see, I settled the score. Pay me, now I'm going for another one. It's always like that. So you want to make sure that you keep yourself straight, okay? Now, somebody's laughing. Don't worry about that. You'll get that tonight, you know, and I'm believing that through the next three night watches, God will speak to you and help you to understand some of these things that I'm talking about to you tonight, all right? Second of all, you're going to pay physically, okay? Come on, go with me to the book of Job, chapter 5, real quick. The book of Job, chapter 5. We're not going to be too much longer, but I just want to make sure that you get this because there are a lot of voices that are trying to cause you to get offended at somebody else's offense. There are a lot of voices that are trying to get you 
to be upset because somebody didn't say this right or somebody didn't do this or, or you know, you know, wh what happens if the, what happens, let me ask you this, what happens if your enemy never repents? What happens? I mean, just, just think about it. What happens if the, the person that you want the apology to come from, that they never apologize? Well, what's going to happen? Uh, are you going to still always be the way you are? Because sometimes, guess what? People don't want to apologize. And people don't want to repent. And people don't care if they hurt you or not. Have you ever thought about that? If, if you're going to get into ministry, you better think those would be the first things that you ever think about. People don't really care about you as much as they really say they care about you. Don't, don't be fooled about that. Now, there are some people whose hearts, their hearts are connected to you. But there are some people that will tell you all kinds of things. There are people in your family that will tell you all kinds of things. You already know about that. You've experienced that firsthand already. They're the first people the enemy use on you. All right? But I'm, I'm just bringing you the reality of walking in truth. Truth is, if you keep yourself in the word of God, if you seek the goodness of God and you always know how good God is and you always think about how good God is to you, you won't have space in your heart for the wrong kind of arrow to come in. See, you won't have space in there. The, the, the shield of faith will kick it right off when it tries to come in. The only thing you need to let in your heart is guess what? The word of God. When that revelation comes like lightning, you ought to let it go. Oh, that, I got you, Lord. But anything else that's going to, that's going to manufacture hurt towards someone or manufacture running somebody down or murdering somebody with your mouth or your words, uh, that right there, you shouldn't even have a second thought about casting that down, okay? And Joe, you guys there? I know you are. Come on. Quick, quick, quick. Chapter 5, verse 2. He says, for wrath killeth the foolish, the foolish man. You guys ever read that? Listen again. For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. One translation says it like this. Resentment kills a fool. <laughs> I'll tell you, somebody just, oh boy, you dropped your chicken wings just now. Listen, listen. Resentment will kill you. See? See? Resentment, not only relationally are you going to lose out, people are not going to want to be around you, but now you're, you're physically killing your own self. That's called suicide. You, <laughs> you're physically killing yourself, and you're wondering why people don't want to be around you. You wonder why you're always going through the pain of, you know, my daddy wasn't there, or, you know, my mama gave me up. Let me tell you something. Jesus took you in. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus now, and you ought to be living for the Lord, thinking about the new world that you're going to, the new life, the new position, eternal life with no pain. Can you imagine living a life where there will never be a thought that will be negative against God? To have a total holy mind? Can you? Can you no, you can't imagine because you're holding that revenge in your heart. See, this is why... I can jump on you because if, if someone don't get you, you're going to be lost forever. And you're going to really believe that I'm going on to glory. And, and you just read the script, same scripture that I read that everybody else is hearing tonight and reading. If you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. And you know you can't get to glory without forgiveness. See, that's the, that's the as they say, the bottom line. Let's bring it on to the top. All right. That's what you first should always think about. How are you treating people so that you will know how God's going to treat you? Because this is all it boils down to, all right? Now, if you're out to settle score, you'll never rest. That's the third thing. You will never rest. It says there's no rest to the wicked. <laughs> if you're out to settle score, you will never have any rest, all right? And so what am I saying to you guys tonight? A lot of people saying a lot of things. A lot of people, you know, I listened to uh, men and, and, and women of God back when this virus first started, and I heard people saying, oh, it's going to end by March the 31st. And I heard people saying, and I was going like, who told you that? Who told you that? 
See, and they say things, and then after it don't happen, then every, they got to come back and make up, guess what? Well, you know, the Lord, God don't change his mind. He says he's the same yesterday, today, forever. God ain't going to tell you one thing, this is going to happen tomorrow, and then guess what? Tomorrow morning he said, well, you know, I changed my mind. Let's do it another way. See, you, you're thinking carnal. You're not thinking, you're not think, thinking spiritual. See, God's got all this stuff in control, and he wants you to be in control of yourself while he's controlling the situation. And the only way you can do that is to keep your heart straight and don't be bent up and, and, you know, and get all out of shape and gain 45 pounds because guess what? Somebody said this and, you know, and that he sounds like he's a racist or somebody said this and it sounds like, you know, they're coming against this church this way or they're coming against my faith. No, your faith, if your faith is in Jesus Christ, you better keep it there and don't let anybody take it out because there are a lot of bounty hunters out there. And all they want to do is to settle a score and then go to the next town, the next church, the next family, the next business, and guess what? Find another score. You should not end up being somebody's score. You should want to walk in the things of God always. So I end this tonight. We've been going a little time, and I, I didn't want to go too long. Pastor John's back there laughing. But keep your heart straight, all right? Always think when you're dealing with things and when you're talking to people, is this how God would, is this how I would want God to treat me? And then back up and say, nope, ain't going there. I want God to treat me like this. See, keep yourself straight. God bless you guys. I pray God's uh, ability for you guys to receive more and more revelation to come on you uh, for the power of God to heal you right where you are, to deliver you right where you are. All of these particular lessons that we do and we put them online, they are to reach out to people and to transform your life in any way that we possibly can through the Spirit of God uh, by a demonstration of the Holy Spirit, not just speaking words, but by the power of Almighty God coming through that screen, uh, you hearing the words. When you see Faith Christian Center World Live, when you see our name, when you hear anything about us, I believe that the Holy Spirit will work on you and begin to open up revelation to you so that your life can be transformed because we're going out, here, out of this place in a little bit. And when I say out, I'm talking about Committed people to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going out. And so we always invite you guys. You know, uh, you guys are on the call tonight. If you're not born again, and I don't know who, how many people are on the call. If you're not born again, you need to fix that right now. You need to fix that with your heart right now. Not a head thing. Not a church thing. You know, not a cultural thing. You know, well, we black, we do this. No, no. let me tell you something. When, when it comes down to facing Jesus, you ain't going to be black, white, blue, green, purple, orange, or whatever. You better be a believer. And that believer is going to receive the light of Almighty God. It ain't going to be a black light. It ain't going to be a yellow light. It ain't going to be a, you know, a, a, a combination of, like the rainbow. It's going to be straight up in light. He's a fa the father of all lights. All right? And it ain't going to be all that stuff. So you need to get that out of you now because you're a new creation in Christ Jesus if you've accepted Jesus as saving Lord. If you're not, then guess what? You still got that going on. You need to get, you need to, as the word says, you were born into the world through that. Whatever it is, black, green, purple, orange, whatever. But when you get born again, all right, you get born into the kingdom of God. I'm going to have a lesson on that one day. You get born again into the kingdom of God. And that kingdom, that kingdom is not about flesh and blood. That kingdom is about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Okay? And it's greater than anything that we've ever seen on this earth. All right? So, uh, I welcome you to become a part of Faith Christian Center World Outreach. If you're not a member here, an associate here, or whatever you need to be here, you don't have to be here to be here, okay? You can just let us know. I want to be under the covering of that ministry. I want to be under the word of that ministry. I want to be under that anointing. I want to be under that leadership to help me grow, to change my life, change my family's life, bring me into the things of God. If that's you tonight, all you need to do is get in contact with us here at the ministry Email us, you know, uh, even if you have to let, let an airplane, you know, you can, get, you can get tickets so cheap today, you can, you can go to work with them, fly to work. Uh, get, the, get the people to drop you off here so that, uh, guess what, you can tell somebody, listen, this is where I want to be, all right? But you need the word of God in your life. You don't need all that junk that people have been telling you about God ain't good, all right? God is good. He's always sought his very best for us in whatever situation we're in, Okay. God bless you guys. You guys have a great night. All of you guys have been on Bible study tonight. Uh, we're going to unmute the call.